This lecture is on Mao's idea of the Four Olds and how we apply that to advocating revolution based on manifest manifestations of the problems and contradictions with capitalism in the actual daily life of the proletariat and of working people. Because when we make our case for revolution entirely about you know, big material dialectics and historical progress, that's all very true, and it's all very valid and important to study that. But if we isolate ourselves to that, that can seem very abstract to regular people, because most regular people, um, at least in my country, don't have very much of a concept of that large historical material dialectic, and developing that is important, but it's also useful to make a material case based on people's own experiences. So we should make a goal of making clear to the masses how the contradictions of that struggle and the contradictions we're trying to resolve through that struggle are coming at the expense of them in their daily life. They manifest in detrimental ways in everybody's life. And so we clarify that although political economic theories of Marxism, Leninism concern, and Maoism, of course, concern grand trends and, you know, big ideas, the dialectical class struggle is also a personal affair for everybody. So with that goal in mind, we can delineate the ways in which these exploitative power structures intrude, basically, into daily life into four categories. Um, and these are old thoughts, old culture, old customs, and old habits. Again, as theorized by Mao as part of the whole larger idea of the cultural revolution and changing the culture of political economy as a way to change the material base of political economy. Um, so more clearly, these problems are persistent oppressive ideas, old thoughts, oppressive cultural structures, old culture, oppressive customs and ways we behave, ways we act towards each other, which is old customs, and oppressive habits that you might not even notice you're doing, which is old habits. And so some basic examples, um, some common old thoughts in America, and I'm writing about America because I live there. Um, hopefully you can do your best to apply these to wherever you live. Um, include the sort of idolization of the racially homogenous heterosexual couple, the, the heterocentrism, as a kind of way of producing baby workers for capital. Um, the persistent cultural norm of blaming the poor for their poverty, so basically classism. Um, and the, the whole idea that you've all, I'm sure, heard in the American school system, if you live in America, of success and how success is producing lots of surplus value for your exploiter. And then slide five, some examples of old culture. We have you know lobbying groups that further neoliberalism and proto-fascism and all these political tools of economic rule of capital, and those cultural structures themselves are you know, ideological old culture that reinforces capitalism. We have widespread movements and institutions built around the political and economic interests of capital, like police, uh, to an extent the education system, the jail system, um, imperialism, the imperialist military, landlords, the worship of the military. And then old customs are things we kind of further ourselves and force upon ourselves. Um, if we go to slide six... Um, so things like mass consumption of unnecessary goods. We've all seen, I'm sure, the Black Friday rush and how we sort of force each other to engage in things that ultimately reinforce our masters and are detrimental to us. So again, mass consumption, ma excuse me, mass consumption, um, the insistence on participating in old institutions, things like extreme religiosity, and of course that's not an attack on anybody's personal spiritual beliefs so much it is, as it is on things like institutionalized homophobia that people enforce on each other, which of course only helps the oppressor, but we still do it. And although I mentioned things like worshipping the police and worshipping the military earlier under old culture, it also fits in very much here. And then lastly, old habits, like I said earlier, are things we do habitually without even really thinking about it that feed into the oppressive cultural superstructure of political economy under capitalism. So we have an impulse to kind of not trust homeless people. That's, again, classism. Um, but there it's not so much systemic classism as it is minor instinctual classism is a form of an old habit. 
treating uh, retail workers with disdain is an old habit that I see a lot, where people kind of subconsciously put people who are paid less below them, even though they ought to have class solidarity because they're being exploited by the same people. Um, and the sort of neoliberal and liberal habit of focusing on small matters about the individual might be the most the most widespread and dangerous um, old habit is thinking everything comes down to you and your individual life and there's nothing systemic so you know if you're poor it's because you don't you don't work hard or if you're um, abused it's because you don't stand up for yourself and that refusal to accept systemic criticism is very much an old habit so then the question comes up how do we fight these phenomena because of course the reason we delineate things into these phenomena is into these categories is so we can fight them more easily and how do we by doing that make clear the problem of wider injustice because that's important too is these um, personal problems we all have with with capitalism shouldn't be the only thing we talk about we should use talking about them as a segue into dialectics and dialectical materialism historical materialism and the bigger theories of MLism and MLMism um, to use the hip cool abbreviations uh, so how do we fight this well when it comes to both old thoughts and old habits which is slide eight the real key thing is to not stop struggling you know don't let you know the fear of annoying people the fear of being perceived as the annoying communist which you might be and I'm not you know I'm not saying become antisocial but don't stop struggle struggling we never let these beliefs be expressed or these actions committed these um you know these cut these thoughts engaged in or these habits engaged in without challenging them and it's not that doesn't mean and in fact you really shouldn't be overly harsh with people who do this because it's not their fault they live in a capitalist cultural hegemony that makes them do these things but you should call it out and say politely and simply you know don't do that that has such and such problem with it where you know don't distrust the homeless it's not their fault they're homeless it's because of capitalism um, and then use those to segue into explaining to them you know the specific contradiction or injustice of the capitalist economy that creates that attitude and if you do that every time people you know are engaging in these these problematic habits and customs they will gradually become more I guess woke or more revolutionary is the more appropriate way to say it so you know if you have a friend that's that's putting down people who are poorer than them explain well that's really not fair they work really hard and the only reason you're putting them down is because capitalism belittles that work and just be amicable and not you know don't make a big deal out of it just make these small corrections until people develop a better sense of themselves as proletarians with solidarity with other proletarians and aren't attacking each other in these oppressive ways but then we get to slide nine old customs um, and recurring social phenomena old customs require more firmness um, because they're not you know they're not matters of individual interactions they're matters of big systems at least to a degree not as much as old culture but they're big systems um, that happen regularly and you have to stop it because it it's bad it leads to oppression so what you do first and foremost is just refuse to participate refuse to participate in traditional customs that are organs of oppression um, you know pull up Colin Kaepernick and kneel or even just sit down during the national anthem don't pledge allegiance to a flag that represents imperialism don't celebrate Veterans Day um, and in doing so when you do that when you refuse to participate in oppressive culture you get other people to think why isn't that person participating in oppressive culture and that gives you an opportunity to explain to them well I'm not participating in oppressive culture because it's oppressive and then you know maybe five times out of ten or even less than that but still sometimes they'll agree with you and you'll win them over and as that movement of refusing to participate in these harmful customs spreads it influences more and more people and fewer and fewer people are doing it as we see again with the example um, of Mr. Kaepernick who spread the idea of um, boycotting the national anthem to a thing almost no one does to a thing that's pretty common to see at sports games these days I mean it's still controversial but it happens um, and so as you spread that idea of 
effectively just sitting out of, of customs you see as problematic, um, it'll exert social pressure and it'll grow. Um, but then lastly, we get to old culture, slide number 10. And those are the hardest to change because that's fundamentally entrenched organs of oppression which are central and are not just in the head but in the real material conditions of the capitalist system of political economy. Um, and so to change things like that, again, things like the military and the way the military acts, the police and the way the police act, the government and the way it serves capital while pretending to be democratic, changing that is hard. And that's really the root of Marxist-Leninist and Marxist-Leninist-Maoist thought, is how do we change that? Because there are people, and we, you know, the classic old Leninist term is the Kotskyites, um, after Kotsky, a thinker who advocated this, who would have us seek to change those systems from within. But we can't do that. We have to, you know, and I'll keep this section brief because you guys already know this and this isn't what the point of the lecture was, but we have to use militancy and use dual power in building that proletarian semi-state and that democratic vanguard to destroy these things. And so, um, you know, that way you get rid of these institutions for good. And so it's not easy to do that. Um you know, to build those big things. And that's why we fight the other three olds, the um, the customs and then, let me see, the customs and the habits and the thoughts. You got to call out people who are expressing ideas that are oppressive and you have to refuse to participate in customs that are oppressive and say, hey, why are you doing that? When you see someone with a habit that's oppressive and explain to people again, this is bad that you do this, you shouldn't do this. The reason you shouldn't do this is this. Again, it's because capitalism. The way to fix that is, again, dialectical struggle and directing that struggle through vanguardism and all those other things. And in that way, by addressing all the smaller cultural problems, the problems that are in people's heads, the first three problems, you get to the fourth one and you use fighting those little four olds to address the big material problem of capitalism and struggle against it and build socialism. Um, so yeah, that is how and why you call out the four olds in your personal life and use them to direct struggle towards the bigger problems, the institutional problems. And um, at this point in my notes, it says discussion time, so that's fun, uh, slide 11, because Again, obviously, I gave examples from America because I live in America. Um, I know we're an international organization, and so the goal here is what are some other problems? What are problems you experience? How do we fix them? Um, so I'll open it up to the room and see if anyone has anything to say. And at this point, a mistake I made became a problem, which is that I accidentally only accorded, recorded my voice and not the voice of the people asking <laughs> questions, um, which was foolish of me. But the question that was asked was, does the American Pledge of Allegiance fall under these four olds, and which of them might it be? And as such, how do we formulate a way to use it as an outlet for anti-capitalist struggle? I think it absolutely is. I think, um, you know, the way the Pledge of Allegiance works is it routinely enforces people pledging their devout allegiance to the imperialist machine on the masses, and it discourages questioning that machine. Um, and I think in terms of delineation of the of the categories of the four olds, I think it's definitely an old custom. It's a thing we make each other do, and we enforce habitually on each other, and we expect it from each other. Um, and so the way to to respond as a Marxist who is against you know the state machinery of imperialism is to just not do it. Um, and that can be difficult because there's social pressure to do it. But the key is if you are firm enough in not doing it, and better yet, if you can get other people not to do it, you create a social counter pressure and you start that, that struggle and you foment questioning of, you know, maybe we shouldn't pledge our lives and our, our brains forever to the imperialist machine. Um, so I guess the short version is I definitely think it falls under old customs and the way to respond to old customs is to just refuse to do them until people realize we shouldn't be doing them at all. And again, I...
mistakenly failed to record the questions because I had them playing on headphones while the microphone wasn't recording in the headphones. So that was uh, dumb. But the question that was asked here was effectively the same question, but about the English institution, and I guess the British institution as a whole, of the monarchy. That's a more complicated one, because the monarchy is kind of a lot of institutions. Um, I think the royal family itself and its big position within the state falls under old culture and is a part of the, you know, the capitalist power structure, at least to an extent. And of course, as you say, it was once part of the feudal power structure, but it's at this point is kind of just a tool of the of the right wing and their capitalist bosses. Um, so that falls under old culture and I think has to be changed with militancy if you want to get rid of the monarchy itself. But things like the idea that I know is very common um, among the British, because I have some British family and I've met some British people, um, that, you know, if you want to be proud of anything any British person has done ever, you have to thank the Queen. Um, and pride in the people of Britain is synonymous with the Queen and God save the Queen and all that. And I think that's really an old habit that people, even people who certainly wouldn't want a monarch if they didn't already have one, kind of just default to um, glorifying her or, you know, whoever's sitting on the chair because it's really about the chair, not the person. Um, and so the way to fix that is to kind of respond to that with, hey, why are you glorifying this person? Why are you glorifying this institution? Maybe you shouldn't. Um, so I think, yeah, monarchy is a, a, multi f a multi-headed beast. But the institution itself, old culture, the habitual glorification of the institution is an old habit. And here I made another dumb mistake because this was not my best day as far as adequate usage of technology. Um, but I had some troubled <laughs> headphones so I didn't hear every the whole question. But it was essentially on what the difference is between old customs and old habits. Which is kind of an ill-defined thing. Because the concepts themselves, as we originally get from Mao, are very vaguely defined to begin with. Well, yeah, I think you're exactly right. That old customs are enforced upon people by institutions like the state and the school system, which those institutions themselves fall under culture, but the things they make you do are customs. But then habits, you know, you don't even know you're doing it. It's just things that get in your head, and you make yourself do it. So I guess the way I'd put it is culture enforces itself upon you. Customs are enforced upon you by other people. Habits are enforced upon you by yourself, almost.